Hello and welcome back to GoldStockTrades.com. Today we have a new and special guest with us, Robert Mintak. Robert is CEO of Pure Energy Minerals. Pure Energy can be traded as PE on the TSX Venture and as HMGLF on the OTC. Thanks, Robert, for being here with us today. Thank you, Jeb. It's nice to speak with you again. My subscribers and myself have been following the Pure Energy story since this summer. Uh, you have an exciting project, the Clayton Valley Project, that's strategically located right near the the only North American producer, uh, Albemarle's uh, so, uh, Silver Peak Mine. Can you talk to us about the location and what you've been able to do these past few months in developing an inferred resource? Yeah, the location was uh, critical in our choice for acquiring the project. Uh, PE has been active in the lithium space for three years in Nevada. Uh, we were on early before all the big announcements about about battery factories being built in Nevada, and uh, we believed in the location in that we knew or we believed that there would be a resource there because we're chasing after brine, so lithium in a solution, lithium in water. Uh, and if you understand how water permeates a basin uh, and how a resource develops, when you can acquire a project that's directly adjacent to an existing producer, your chances of success in finding the resource are magnified. Uh, so in the short period of time that uh, we've taken the project from really a greenfield project, uh, in 2013 we signed an MOU on it, to 2014 beginning our exploration program, uh, we've been able to produce the only 43-101 inferred resource on a brine project in North America. Uh, last July, we published a uh, technical report for, uh, showing for 816,000 tons lithium carbonate equivalent, so LCE. That's the sort of the benchmark uh, measuring stick for lithium resources uh, as uh, an inferred resource in Clayton Valley. Uh, since July, we've had a significant amount of attention drawn to us because of a supply agreement announcement we did in September, uh, which is generated a lot of buzz about Nevada and thrown a lot of attention down there and a bunch of other companies have popped up since all the hard work we've done. Uh, but we're continuing developing the project. We're not chasing after the lithium story. We're part one of the companies out there that's telling the story. Uh, we announced just a few weeks back that we have started our second drill campaign of 2015. We are permitted for three new wells on our project. The project's about uh, just over 9,000 acres. Uh, so we've grown the project significantly since 2014 when it was 4,500 4, acres. It's now over 9,000 acres. Uh, we've permitted for three new wells on the project. Uh, the work to date has been two drill holes in the north and two historic wells that were there. So four drill holes used to define the inferred resource report. Uh, we're permitted for three new wells up to a depth of 500 meters or just over 1,500 feet. Uh, those wells are in a southern area of the claim block that hasn't been explored yet. So we've got incredible seismic reflection work done last spring that was used to model the basin for the inferred resource, which has identified you know, very prospective targets for us. And this drilling work, we believe, will allow us to grow the inferred resource report based on the data that we're going to get from the drill results. So that works underway right now. Uh, we announced about uh, just over a week ago that the crews were on the ground. Uh, the Thanksgiving break last week put a couple days delay on it right uh, over the weekend. But everyone's back on the program today. And I believe the drills are spinning as we're speaking, Jeb. Uh, those results should appear sometime in January. Uh, subject to weather, we anticipate having the drill program finished this December. Uh, soil samples and uh, brine samples taken, uh, independently analyzed. Uh, we've got a great team that's on the ground. Uh, the, our COO, Dr. Andy Robinson, is overseeing the project. 
Uh, we've also got Professor Leanne Monk from the University of Alaska. She's the world's foremost authority on geoth- or continental brines. She's going to be on the project uh, reviewing some of the data and consulting with Andy. We've just uh, recently announced uh, a new director to the company, um, Patrick Highsmith. Patrick is uh, very well known in the lithium space. He was the CEO and COO of Lithium One. He developed the Sol de Vida lithium brine project in Argentina uh, back in 2010, 11, and 12. That they successfully sold to Galaxy Lithium for, I believe it was $112 million. Uh, Patrick is uh, going to be on the project with me this weekend. And, uh, you know, that technical development or the exploration development work that's going right now to, to deliver the inferred resource will also allow us to begin uh, preparing more representative brine samples from the project uh, so that we can continue our process testing work, which we are partnered with two of the world's leading companies for technical uh, lithium processing, uh, Bateman Advanced Technologies in Israel and uh, POSCO in Pohan, Korea. So with the results from the exploration drilling, we're going to be taking bulk brine samples that we'll be sending to Israel uh, to work at a mini pilot plant we've booked for Q1 2016, and then further work that we're doing with POSCO. So there's a huge amount of work going on right now, uh, both on the ground and in the next uh, few months in the laboratories uh, in Korea and Israel on delivering what we believe will be a PEA uh, published in Q2 2016. That's a big breath and a lot of talking, Jeb. So I told a big story there, but we can dissect it now if you have any specific questions about the stages or our intentions on it. Well, it's great to see with a junior company that's growing these strategic partners. It provides a lot of credibility having POSCO and Bateman uh, working on um, Bateman working on the the mini uh, pilot uh, plants that you're you're working on. Could you talk to us? Get into some of the more detail, some of the work that you're doing with Bateman on the mini pilot scale testing. Yeah, what was critical on our project uh, and to address uh, chemistry concerns for um, delivering final product materials to meet the requirements for supply agreements for battery companies. Uh, is to have a process that can take the raw brine and deliver a very high purity lithium hydroxide or lithium carbonate, depending on what the supply contracts would have. Uh, having to do that in-house is it requires tens of millions of dollars of R&D work. Uh, companies like Bateman Advanced Technologies or POSCO, they've been doing research on creating battery materials or extracting minerals from uh, brine solutions for a number of years. They've got huge budgets that we don't have, so we're very fortunate to be working with those two companies. Uh, with Tonova Bateman, uh, I've had a relationship with uh, Tonova since about 2012, uh, and they've been very patient with us, allowing us to uh, bring our project forward, waiting for us to get financing to be able to provide them a brine sample. Last uh, January, we worked with their R&D facility in uh, uh, Israel, and uh, at the lab scale or bench scale, we were able to show that their solvent extraction process would be a highly uh, could potentially be a highly successful uh, process technology to deploy in Clayton Valley. We sent them a bulk brine sample, which they were able to synthesize, and through their bench through their lab recover virtually 100% of the lithium from our brine. To compare that to the conventional model that's used right now in Clayton Valley, we recover less than 50% of the lithium. So if you're producing at Silver Peak, where Albemarle's permitted 6,000 tons per year of production, using a Bateman facility, if it's successfully commercialized, you could more than double your output using that technology. You're also reducing your environmental footprint from thousands of acres of evaporation ponds to a process facility that's literally the size of maybe two football fields. So the first work that we did with Bateman was uh, bench scale work to show that the solvent extraction process that they use, uh, the way it works is you pump brine into their process facility. 
alkali metals, calcium and magnesium, are removed first through a membrane process called LIP. And then a solvent is added to the uh, next stage of the brine, which is lithium-specific. So it strips the lithium from the brine. The remaining brine, or raffinate or waste they call it, is scrubbed clean so there's no organic solvents left into it. And it's basically a raw brine, again, that's free of the lithium and can be re-injected into the aquifer. The uh, solvent-rich lithium is then taken, uh, the solvent stripped from it, and the lithium is then converted into a lithium chloride solution, and that solvent is recycled back into the process, so you have virtually a closed loop, uh, which really reduces your uh, OPEX, and it also, the facility being so small, the CAPEX numbers are significantly, we believe, lower than evaporation ponds, but that closed loop allows for virtually 100% lithium recovery, and because it's contained, your ability to be able to produce at the end of the process very high purity materials is much uh, more controlled than it is using conventional evaporation processes, which are continually chemicals are added to adjust uh, your pH levels and to remove contaminants from uh, your brine through the evaporation pond process, which takes m months, if not years. This process with Bateman uh, is shown to take less than a day. So we've cut down the <laughs> deliverable from pumping out of the aquifer to a finished product to less than 24 hours, reduced from 12 to 24 months. We've more than doubled the recovery rate, and we're able to, be believe, produce a much higher, a higher grade material at the end. So that's all critical if we're looking to become a supplier for uh, battery materials, which have a specific uh, lithium chemistries that are needed to be able to meet. Uh, so the work with Bateman at the mini pilot plant is taking the lab scale work we've done and taking to the next stage. So we'll be able to use numbers from the mini pilot plant work, which will be able to extrapolate our engineering costs and build a model to show in our PEA what uh, very you know, fairly comfortably accurate OPEX, CAPEX numbers plus uh, uh, mass balance flow, um, so we'll be able to get our energy costs uh, uh, as well, uh, all related to it. Uh, that work will be started in Q1 2016, uh, and we believe, you know, probably figure, we should have all that data uh, compiled in, into our PEA in Q2. Robert, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's great to see the progress that you've made in 2015 with developing the resource. I'm excited about the drilling that's going on now and the advancement towards the PEA, which we should see in, uh, I guess, quarter two of, of 2016. So I want to wish you a, a good luck on that. And thank you so much for being here with us today. Is there anything else that you would like to add? I guess uh, just uh, it's, it's a great, it's a fun project to be on. Uh, we're very fortunate to be working in Nevada, so uh, it's an easy project for all of us to, you know, it's, we're, we're trying to build it as a global showcase on a, as in a, a new type of lithium, well, a new type of mining uh, using environmental stewardship technologies, replacing, you know, conventional um, mining techniques that don't work in the 21st century. So it's, even if you're not looking at it as an investment, it's interesting if you like technology stories and you like the evolving clean energy story. It's, you know, it's all high risk. We've got to prove that it works, but it's a fun story for people to watch if they're interested in the green economy. Just seeing where we're taking this, the challenges we're, going to, we're facing, but also, you know, building it step by step and the network of partners that we've built is uh, exceptional. So it's a, it's a great story to watch. Robert Mintak, CEO of Pure Energy Minerals, which could be traded as PE on the TSX Venture and as HMGLF on the OTC. Uh, you can find more info at pureenergyminerals.com. Thank you, Robert, for being here with us today. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it.